Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. I have a Halo Light combo pack which comes with two Halo Lights and four One Lights. I also have my Pear Blossom Press stamp and die bundle and of course my roll of World's Best Foam Tape. It's a double thick foam tape. It's repositionable for about 30 minutes and then it uh, it's a perfect thickness for the halo light, which is why we'll be using it today. I also have Otterly Adore from Rabbit Hole Designs as well as the coordinating dies, but I'm also going to grab this modern embossed window panel number three die from Trinity Stamps because it is perfect for the halo lights. It's the perfect circle in the middle for those um, halo lights to remain hidden and just easy die cutting. So I'm going to start with getting my halo light ready. So I'll open my pack and I'm just going to pop out one of these halo lights and a battery. Now these are PC boards, but they are very easy to pop. So you can be a little firm with them to be able to get all of the uh, connecting pieces off. And then the batteries are in the pack with a piece of tape, so you just have to get under that tape. You can see me struggle for a second here, but it's really easy. The batteries are not sticky under the tape, so it's easy to peel off and put into your light up device. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my pack away so I can use them for a future card. I like keeping my batteries and the easy lights or halo light or one lights all together so I don't lose anything. So go ahead and slide the battery into the case and here you can see those LEDs are lighting up. Now for my background, I thought I would keep things simple by using some watercolor paper. So it already looks like an underwater scene and I'm going to use this to die cut that modern embossed window panel. There are three different sizes from Trinity Stamps. This is number three. It's the smallest of the three circles. So I went ahead and die cut that out and I'm going to save the little blue circle that cut out and I'll show you how I will attach that in just a minute. I have my top folding A2 card base. That's my favorite style of card. If you are using this as inspiration for your card, feel free to do a side panel, whatever works for you. Now my pattern paper is kind of flimsy and I want it to be a little more sturdy so I die cut another one of those embossed window panels out of white cardstock. I'm going to move on to stamping and coloring my images since I'm getting all of my pieces for my card together before assembling anything. So I'm going to take out my otter, some of the sea life like the seaweed and coral and that little shell and I'm going to stamp it in a really pale light gray ink. This is Jellyfish from Lawn Fawn because it is alcohol marker friendly and I want to stamp with some more bold VersaFine Clear inks, but those inks are not alcohol marker friendly. So I'm just going to use the colors of the ink pad to inspire my marker choices. I'm using a combination of Oh Hoo Hoo art markers and Copic markers, just using what's in front of me on my desk. I'm doing some very basic two-tone coloring. My sea otter will have three, but everything else is two colors. So I colored my shell in pink and I'm going to color the coral in orange. The little seaweed pieces will be in green and my otter will be in brown. I wanted just to keep things kind of rainbowy and colorful since I already have a blue green uh, watercolor inspired background. I just kept it bright and colorful with the orange and the pink and the green as well. It went pretty bright fun green colors, um, nothing too dark. I just really wanted to keep my scene that I'm making really bright and happy, especially because the sentiment is going to be, I utterly adore you. And I just wanted the card to be fun and happy. So I colored my shell, I colored my coral, my little greenery seaweed pieces, and now I'm moving on to my sea otter. I'm going to use the bottom of my sea otter as kind of where the shadows will be and the light source will be more towards the top. I realized uh, later when I was putting the card together that I have an actual light source on my card. So if you would rather have the shadows be more on the top, since the light source is going to eventually be underneath, my sea otter you can do that as well but I figured the top of the ocean would be brighter so that's why I have my shadows more on the bottom side of my sea otter. 
Now, I'm not an expert no-line colorist. I actually really struggle with no-line coloring, but I'm just doing my best to stay in the very faint lines for my images. Um, and then so after I add in the last little dark brown detail for my sea otter's nose, I'm going to do some stamping with the VersaFine Claire. Uh, different colored inks. So I stamped my images originally with my little mini Misty here and I did not take out the stamps. I didn't move them in any way. So I'm going to start with inking up just the sea otter with that pine cone VersaFine Clear ink so my sea otter can be brown. I'm going to realize here that I put my magnets where they're stamped so I'm just going to readjust here and I'm going to stamp my sea otter in that brown and then I will clean it off and remove it from the misty and now I'm going to stamp my little shell in pink and I'll do this again for the coral this time in orange and again, I don't need to worry about the placement of my stamps because they're still in my Misty from the original stamping with the really pale gray ink. And then finally, I'm stamping my two little kind of sea life here in green. And I really like how this turned out. Again, just gives them nice, bold, colorful lines. And there is a coordinating die set from Rabbit Hole Designs, the Otterly Adored dies. So I went ahead and used some repositionable tape to keep those dies in place and die cut out all of my images. So I'll get this die set put away and then we're going to move on to do a little bit more stamping, this time our sentiment onto the watercolor background. So I'm going to do a dry run of the placement of where I want my images to go. So I'm going to have my coral and little seaweed pieces pop out from, I guess, through the whole opening. This is in the watercolor background. And then I have my sea otter floating above on top. And originally I was just going to have the shell just kind of a little added touch. But then I thought it would be really fun to make it where I have the push button for my halo light. So I know that I need placement for my shell a little lower where the halo light button is and I have that nice bit of open space there to put my sentiment. So I just put my stamp approximately where I want it to go on my paper and I'll get out my Misty again so I can use the grids on the cover plate of the Misty to get my sentiment straight and centered. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to grab another color, VersaFine Clair. This time I'm going to grab Warm Breeze. It's more of like a teal color. And I just thought that would look really pretty on the watercolor pattern paper that I have for my card. So I went ahead and stamped it. I only needed to stamp it once. The VersaFine Clair stamps really nicely. And I'll go ahead and clean off my stamp and put that away. I should have just left my watercolor panel in my Misty because I'll realize here that I'm going to need to stamp my push on my watercolor card front um, so that way my card receiver will know that it is interactive and that they can push on the card to get it to light up. So I'll grab my Misty again, put my panel back into the Misty and get my magnets in place. And then I'm going to just place the halo light approximately where I know it's going to go on the card base. It's going to be sandwiched in between my card base and this card front. And I'll grab the push sentiment from the Pear Blossom Press uh, stamp and die bundle and I've got the push just under that button because the button is actually going to be where the shell is I have it kind of an angle just to add it as just a fun little touch and it says push after I stamp in that same warm breeze ink pad so now I have all of my elements ready to go for my card so I will get my push button uh, or push stamp put away and we'll start assembling our card so first I want to get these two layers of paper together. Like I said, my card front was a bit flimsy because it's a piece of pattern paper. So I am adhering this white card stock to the back of it just to give my card front some stability and make sure you know it is going to be interactive. I don't want there to be a punctured hole or anything from pushing on the push button. So this just thickens up my paper. 
Now I'm going to place it on top of my A2 card base and I'm just going to use magnets to hold it in place. My glass board that I'm working on is magnetic so I'm just going to use those to keep those layered together and I'm going to add some liquid adhesive to that circle die cut out. Again this is from the modern embossed window panel number three from Trinity Stamps and I'm going to place that so it looks cohesive right through the circle and then I will pull off my panel and make sure that circle is glued down onto my card base. So now it looks like a seamless scene from the back, the circle that's cut out um, to my background. Now to attach the halo light, I'm just going to use some double-sided adhesive. This particular one is one inch thick and it fits perfectly on the back of the halo light battery pack panel. I'll peel off the release paper and I'm going to get this centered onto my card base around that blue circle that I glued down. So that way my halo light is centered around that circle. I realized that I probably should have added a little bit of glue to the actual circle halo part of the halo light. So I'm just adding a little bit of liquid adhesive and I'll hold this down for a bit for that glue to really stick between the halo light and my card base. Now I'm grabbing my world's best foam tape. Again, this is a double thick foam. It's repositionable for about 30 minutes, which helps if I don't get it exactly lined up how I like it, but it will um, eventually adhere permanently to whatever layers you're gluing together. And it's the perfect thickness for all of the battery packs from Pear Blossom Press. So now I have my double-sided adhesive. I have all four sides around my card base, a little bit of extra stability around the battery pack, and now let's build our scene. So again, I'm going to have my coral and my sea, like kelp seaweed, peeking out from through the hole opening on the window panel. So I'm just adding some adhesive to the coral and I put that in the center. And since I have two of the seaweed, I'm going to angle one out to the left and one out to the right. And that just creates a fun little ocean scene. I'm using liquid glue to glue these down so I can get them placed exactly where I want them and have a little bit of extra wiggle room time if it's not placed um, perfectly the first time. I can kind of maneuver it until I like it. I also glued the green seaweed pieces to the coral to make sure there is some stability there um, and just you know finish off that little scene. Finally I'm going to add my sea otter and I'm just going to add glue to the top half of this little sea otter because his little bottom, <laughs> or I guess not his bottom, but his underside is going to be um, overlapping the opening as well. That will finish off our scene that we need to glue together. So I'll peel off all of the release paper from our foam on the card base. And then I'm going to get my panel lined up to the four sides of the card base and also make sure my circle doesn't have any white peeking through in the middle. And there you can see our fun little scene is really coming together. Finally, I'm gonna glue my little shell right where the push button is above the word push. I wanted to add some sparkly details, so I'm going to grab some sequins. These are the turquoise tinsel sequin confetti from This Calls for Confetti. So I'll go ahead and open up this package. It's my first time using it, but they have a really pretty tealy turquoise color that I thought matched with the sentiment ink I used and the background paper. I'm going to use a pickup tool to just start placing them around the card. I end up putting them all more around the halo light opening. So once I liked the placement, I just glued them down with some liquid glue and that will finish off the details of the card. I hope you enjoyed this little underwater sea otter halo light scene. It was a lot of fun to put together and I think it's just really cute and I love the subtle touches. Here you can see a close-up of the halo light card. I hope you had fun with me today. You can find the supplies that I used to create this card down below in the description box. Make sure you stick around here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel for even more inspiration using all kinds of interactive lights. We love Pear Blossom Press. It's the guts to make the insides of the light up cards that you see here on this YouTube channel. So we sure hope you'll like and subscribe and watch for more inspiration. Bye.